Right, it's a story we told you about earlier this week. Two young innocent boys who were full of life were killed by their neighbor's python up in Canada. But this was a rarity, folks, and joining us is a snake expert, Susan Nowicki, the president of the San Diego Herb Society. Thank you for joining us on Primetime, sure. Susan, with your beautiful albino Burmese python. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and her name is Precious, and she is precious, and she's beautiful and soft and sweet. We've been playing with her for a little bit now, and you can see her face. She is a doll. But as we were talking about earlier, this isn't a pet for kids. No, it's not. This is really an advanced keeper species. These animals have the potential to grow to be 20 feet, weigh up to 200 pounds. They're a large snake. It takes somebody with real experience to be able to handle an animal like this and know how to read the cues and the body language from it. And this snake is taking two of us to hold the snake because it's 65 pounds, correct? Correct. Now, I could hold this thing by myself because my kid is like 75 <laughs> pounds, but if she tried to strangle me, then I would not be so happy about yeah. it. But look at her face. She's sweet. She's really sweet. Um, now, let's give the viewers a little education on the whole snakes. And this, the snake that actually killed those boys was an African rock python. Correct. And they're, are they le they're not legal in Canada. Are they legal here? They are legal with special permits in Canada. And there's some discrepancy as to whether the owner had the permit or not right now. Uh, we're not really sure what his legal status was in owning the snake. But here in the United States, they are technically legal. They're coming under the Lacey Act. And so they can't be transported across state lines. That would be a felony. Now, um, let's talk about that case because the enclosure was in an apartment and it was from floor to ceiling. And it got out through the air duct or the ventilating duct, I don't realize. What happened, these are powerful muscular animals. Mm -hmm. They're inquisitive. And if there was a weak point in the ceiling, what the snake is naturally going to do is explore its environment. And it would venture up into that area, which would be dark and preferable to them, especially if they've had a recent meal. And as she's traveling through the walls or the ceiling or the vents, whatever it was that the snake had traveled through, my understanding is that she collapsed through the ceiling or he collapsed through the ceiling onto the boys. That would entail sheetrock coming down on those children as well as a 100 pound snake. Mm -hmm. That's enough to asphyxiate children right there. We do not know at this point if there was actual constriction that occurred. If the snake actually wrapped around the children and constricted them, and if that happened, how did someone in the household not hear A, the crashing roof, and B, the children struggling? Well, they say they killed the snake. Why would they kill the snake? The veterinarian euthanized the snake. I guess that is protocol in Canada. Mm. I really can't answer as to why mm. they would have done that. Well, it's still a, a horrible accident, and again, these are beautiful, beautiful reptiles. Yes. And, but it takes, you know, it's a big responsibility in the right person to be a snake owner, especially of this size. Right, and you're talking about an animal yeah. that has a 30 year plus lifespan. So it's a major commitment too. How old is Precious here? Precious is, we estimate, about six years old. Six years, she's gorgeous, she's sweet. She's been wonderful. She's been here for the last 15 minutes. Um, and I asked you, if she would bite me, you said no, but she has teeth. Talk about that. Right. She does have teeth in four rows. They're angled backwards. They're quite sharp, and they're used for grabbing hold of the prey and maintaining control of the prey as they constrict. Well, I hope she doesn't think I'm prey anytime soon. You don't <laughs> smell like a mouse or a rat or any other small rodent. She doesn't re equate you with prey whatsoever. Yeah, but I had a salmon salad. <laughs> She's not a fish eater. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. She's so uh -huh. sweet. Look at her. Yeah, she's a very mellow animal. She's one of our animal ambassadors, and she does a great job with people. She sure does, and so. she's gorgeous. What do you feed her? Uh, she actually rotates between large rats and piglets, and all of our food comes frozen. We thaw it and serve it warm. You do? Yes. <laughs> you don't microwave it? <laughs> no, you don't microwave prey. It makes for a mess. She's gorgeous. Now she's smelling me, isn't she? Yes. It was funny because I could hear her and she's touching me with her, she's touching me with her tongue. What is yep. that? What is she doing she's there? She's just smelling. She's just smelling. They use their tongue to smell. They don't use their nostrils per se. And so all she's doing when she sticks her tongue out is gathering scent molecules on her tongue and touching those to the roof of her mouth where the Jacobson organ is yeah. and inquiring about her environment. Yeah, she is awesome. Let me ask you this. 
Um, how many of these types of snakes are in California? Oh gosh, hundreds if not thousands, really? yes. And there's that many people that can be that responsible with a snake like this? There are a lot of people that are quite well trained. Many people like myself have more than one of these. Wow. Um, I run an educational nonprofit, that's why we have so many yeah. of them. Uh, we also take in rescues at the Herpetological Society. A lot of times what happens is people get them when they're babies and 18 inches long and really cute. Yeah. And in that first year, they'll go from 18 inches to six feet. She's breathing and it sounds crazy. It sounds like she has asthma. That's so. what scares me is the breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just because of the angle I'm holding her oh, at. Oh, really? It's hard for her to breathe? Yeah, it's not so much hard for her to breathe. You just hear yeah. her breathing more. So, so again, if people wanted to learn more about snakes and are thinking about being a snake owner, they should probably contact you. Yes, and definitely contact us yeah. at the San Diego Herpetological Society or at Ecovivarium. Both have websites. Well, thank you so, so. much for bringing Precious. Thank you. She is Precious. Snake, hmm, who does she remind me of? Someone that's in our media lately. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, she's much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in a little bit.